Hey guys, welcome back to the range. Today we're going to be out here on uh, one of the new clubs I just recently joined. They have a range out here. It's pretty dope. So we're going to go ahead and check that out today. We're going to be shooting some rifles. Um, today I got the Ruger American. I believe this is in the Predator, but I don't have the stock um, that I got with it anymore. I put this Boyd's gun stock on it and uh, I just like the way it looks. This isn't for any kind of real uh, purpose. I got this just for playing around target shooting. So I did get the version that does take the AR magazines. Um, it is chambered in 223. That's what we're going to be having fun with today. It came with a Vortex Crossfire 2 on it. And uh, I have yet to, to shoot this thing yet. So we're going to take our first couple shots right here. I have a target set up maybe about 25 yards down the way. Um, don't think that it's going to be able to be seen on video, but we're going to go ahead and take a close look at what kind of recoil this thing's fitting out. It shouldn't be a whole, whole lot. It is just 223. So let's jump right into it. Pardon me while I move all this crap around. Your protection. Alrighty, let's go ahead and get her set up. I got some Allen sandbags right here. Really easy for keeping your rifle nice and steady. A little, little bit of a tight action there. Might break in. I did grease it up beforehand, but I don't know if that'll actually help it. All right, taking the first couple shots. Trying to see if we actually hit paper there. That's horrendous if we didn't hit paper. We're gonna go ahead and take another shot. I don't think that one actually hit the paper. That's 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 horrifying. <laughs> Let's see. Okay, I think I saw where that one landed. Looks like we're shooting a bit low and left. Let's go, ahead and, let's go ahead and get these turret caps off. Got a little bit closer. We're gonna adjust it some more. That one was a lot closer. We're gonna go up. Okay, that was pretty close. We're gonna go. Up a little bit more. How many we got left in this mag? Looks like we got, looks like we got five. We're going to go ahead and shoot a three shot group right here and we're going to see what kind of uh, um, siding we've got set in so far. I'm wanting to try to set this up for potentially 100 yards, so we're starting off at 25 just on paper. Pulls out. Looks like we had a bit of a flyer there. I'm going to go ahead and take this to a five shot group just because of that. Okay, let's go take a look at the damage. Eesh. All right, so just to explain to y'all what's going on here, these are the couple first couple ones that helped me get on target. And this is my five shot group. 
these were the first three hits. This one's the one that was the flyer. And this one flew as well. So, hmm. Exclude these. That's not bad. Those, we have to kind of count them. So, what are we going to do? Alright, so it seems like the group is generally in this area. So we're going to go ahead and bring it down and to the left and see if that makes any difference. Alright guys, we're back. I got the target freshened up down range with the little, uh, the little hole stickers that comes on those Allen targets. So, before we take a couple more shots, I'm going to take a minute to go ahead and go over a little bit more stuff on this gun for you. Um, so like I said before, this is the Ruger American Predator. I believe this is the Predator model. Um, comes with, I, I believe they give you an option for the Ruger magazines or AR magazines. I opted for AR magazines. The bolt, the bolt is smooth for what it is. And you're not going to be impressed by it, but it's nothing like a Remington 770. It's not a sticky bolt. It's just on those top rounds in the mag, it's very, like it takes a lot of pressure to, to get them to chamber. But I noticed once the mag was half empty, we uh, didn't have those issues as much anymore. Um, it does come with a threaded barrel, comes with a little thread protector. I got mine with the threaded barrel because I do plan on putting a can on it at one point. Um, scope, just a great deal for this to go ahead and come on this gun. And uh, the stock that was on it already, the reason I did change this out is because I'm not a big fan of the sta the Savage Axis and the Ruger American stocks. I think they're pretty much one and the same. Um, yeah, I'm not a big fan of them, so I definitely had to get that changed out um, to a nicer kind of wood. Plus, like I said, this is a plinking rifle. I, I wanted to add a little bit of character to it, a little bit of uniqueness. So that's what I did to do that. So let's go ahead and get these mags loaded up, and we will send some more bullets down range. All right, we're back and we're gonna get set up right here real fast. And just a quick side note, something I didn't mention before is that we are shooting the 223 Wolf performance. So any variations in the group can probably be tightened up with some better ammo, some ammo that this rifle locks a little bit more. I just noticed that was something I didn't really tell you guys. Um, we are just kind of shooting plinking ammo. So that could be a variation for our groups. Like I said, I am going to go ahead and adjust this down and to the left a, a little. Not a lot. So let's go ahead and send some downrange. All right, that looked a lot better than the first group. We're gonna go ahead and take a step down range and we're gonna have to look at that. I think we're gonna be a lot more surprised with the results on that one. I do think we ended up getting it right on target. Like I said, this is about the 25, 30 yard mark. I haven't set a range finder on this, so I don't know for sure, but there are some steel plates down that way at about 100, 150 yards. We're gonna take a couple shots at those here shortly and see if we can even get on them should only be about four inches low though so this is the group we ended up ended up with um we got these four right in this line and then we got these two up here now i'm going to tell you the truth i was aiming right here on the side of this bullseye just because that's where I ended up pulling my first shot from. Wanted them to all stay the same. It was a little bit of a pull on my part, but I did aim the rest of them on the corner of this bullseye. So it looks like we are having a variation. Might take it down and to the left just a, well, 
just down. I think we're just going to go down with it. I think the, uh, the left and right is kind of where we might want it to be. I can hone that later. I just kind of wanted to get it on paper today. So that might be where we're standing. And actually, I might even leave this because at 100 yards, it might be um, not that noticeable of a drop. We'll see y'all back at the table. All right, y'all. We're back here at the table set up. I do believe I still have a couple of rounds. Yeah, I have about five more rounds to clear. We're going to go ahead and leave the elevation settings where they are. I think uh, down at 100 yards, 150 yards, we might only experience two to three inches of drop on our zero. So just so I don't go messing nothing up, we're going to roll with these just for a second. I'm going to see if I can hit the steel. So let's see if we can't send some. I don't know which side we just hit right there, but we definitely hit the steel at 100. Let's send another one. I believe that was another hit. Some steel a little bit farther back, 20 yards. Let's see if we can hit that. Yep. Okay, it looks like we might be on point, guys. Awesome. I, I think I hit just a, a four inch gong down there at about 120, 120, 125, something like that yards. We got one up on the hill. I might have to freehand this one just a little bit, but I think we can tap that one too. Yeah, sweet. Yeah, we're zeroed in, guys. Sorry if the table's a little shaky as well. Um, the camera setup is just kind of like a mobile setup, um, but I think it'll suffice for what I got going on here. I don't think you guys are hindered that much just because of that. We're going to go ahead and open up a little bit more, toss some more lead down range. We got some tool ammo right here. I'm just going to load up another five. Now this is steel cased um, rather than the the gold brass um, that we were just shooting, the, the wolf gold. So we'll see if there's any variation in that. Like I said, those are my first shots with this rifle. Oops. That was a little janky. But we'll see what we can't hinder up from it. Part of a damn steel case ammo. We all know what was going on with that one little round we had. See if I can find that real quick. I had kind of like a little jam up with it. So I just went ahead and jerked it out. Oh, here it is. Nothing looks wrong with it. I'm gonna set it right back down in there. Set it down range. Yeah, it doesn't look, doesn't look like anything's wrong with it. Yeah, there's something definitely wrong with it. I'm not, I'm not chambering that. Hmm. Might have been the rim. I will note that for you guys. Um, not that I've ever had problems with this ammo before, but tool ammo, 223, planking ammo, this wooden chamber, even though y'all saw me shoot some, some downright just now, 
I did have one that went in chamber. It doesn't appear to be warped in any kind of way. So I don't want to. I don't want to put that back in the gun. So we're gonna put that over here. Yeah, tell me what y'all think about this little gun. I just purchased it because um, I wanted something to play around with that wasn't too expensive. 223 is not that expensive right now. I think you can find it where I live for $8.99 a box. And that's for PMC and uh, Winchester, I believe. So it's not some bad stuff. Um, I'm sure you could find the Tool Ammo and the Wolf for maybe a dollar or so cheaper, depending on where you guys live. So let's... Uh, Let's continue to play around with it here. I might set you guys up down range and let you see some of the steel that's going on right there. She wrote, yeah, I'm just nailing that little gong down there. I'll tell you that, this, I've never really gave the Ruger Americans a try. The only reason I was even about to give this thing a try is because I had an idea for the Boyd's gun stock for it. And folks, do not let me divert you away from purchasing these firearms. It is just that, almost you would say, I'm up to a more premium standard nowadays, and there's really no need for that. It's honestly just my personal preference. Um, I'm shooting a lot of um, like Seiko, um, the higher end Winchesters, um, Milserp. I mean, I'm shooting Milserp. Uh, that's, that's a premium firearm nowadays. Um, and back in the day, I did, I did used to hunt with uh, a Savage, a Savage Axis, Savage 110. Heck, I, I've even still got them. Um, but just for the money, what I'm trying to get out here is make sure you make it comfortable to you. That stock that comes with them, if you can make it work, go for it. Um, mine seemed problematic, seemed like it was too squishy, and seemed like it wanted to ride that barrel. So I had to make sure I got this stock for this one. But overall, it's a fun little gun. I'm going to go ahead and send you all up and down range, and I'll let you all see some of the steel action. We'll get this wrapped up. But, I don't really know what was here before I got here. I think it was actually completely painted when I got here. So, yeah, don't look that bad. I think we only missed two shots. I don't remember. Um, there were two times I shot and I didn't see it moving. So, not that bad. I did some rapid shots there at the end to see how that would work. And <laughs> didn't look that bad. All right, let's head back up here to the table. We'll wrap this thing up. Hey guys, we're back here set up at the table. Um, yeah, I mean, as far as first impressions with the Ruger American Predator, chambered in 223, big thumbs up from Red's range. 
Um, definitely impressed. I mean, you could really say it's what's to be expected. The the range I was shooting at today is typical rifle range, even more so a little bit further. So pushing the limits on bang for buck, you don't really have a pure measurement for that here today. But we went through the process of getting it sighted in at 25. We left the adjustments alone because we were a little hot at 25. Pushed it on out to 100, 120 yards. And we performed on a four inch gong with no adjustments. Um, in the future, I could put paper down range, adjust it a little bit deeper, and to really get those groups tightened up, we can shoot even further. But as far as what we got here today, for a gun that usually sells for about 400, 500 by itself, of course, the, the add of the Crossfire 2 increased the price. Then I got this thing for 800 bucks out the door. It's not a bad deal. So, if you guys are thinking about picking you up an Ruger American Predator M223, highly recommend it. You won't be disappointed. And I'd always say that for Ruger American Predators or just Ruger American rifles in general, chambered in other, other uh, cartridges. Um, they do really make good guns. So, without further ado, thank you guys for joining me here on the range today. And I'll see you guys on the next one.